Hello everyone, welcome to this week's Minecraft summary. We are on episode 20 something. 21, session 21, episode 21. You'll notice that there's a gap in the numbering system if you were wondering about that. It's because Lawrence was keeping the numbers up to date with the session number that it was related to and I wasn't. I was just doing it sequentially. I thought, why not catch up? Everyone's in line. So we are on episode 21, we're on session 21. What did we do in session 21? Well, before it, I dug out this place. <clears throat> I think I showed you this. Uh, this was already here. This is the semi-automatic crafting station. Um, here we have all the things that are 5x5 five five recipes that you have to make manually, but you can ask the machine to give you the components for in order to do said crafting. Um, you'll notice this is different. Excuse me. <coughs> oh, too much dust today. We're moving houses. Horrible. Dust everywhere. Don't do it, kids. Um, this used to be a glass cable that was um, put in an anvil to be called ME controller part one. That didn't work because what we didn't realize is that does count as a glass cable. So when a recipe needed a glass cable but there weren't any, it tried to craft an ME controller part one instead of a, uh, a glass cable. I don't think that there is going to be a request for a um, nearly dead pair of enchanted boots. So the ME controller part one is now a nearly dead pair of enchanted boots that has been called ME controller part one. Excuse me, there's ME controller itself. You remember how this works? If you don't, go back to the previous video where I explain it in a ludicrous amount of detail and go on about it too much. You've already seen this. I dug out this area <clears throat> the next day, or in between streams. Um, it was not its own special stream, it was not its own special episodes. I dug it out. I found that we um, were overlooking this gap here, which I believe is the same gap that Mike's um, underground basement thingy overlooks, which might be up there approximately, so look out for that. Um, there was a lot of skeletons, it was very pesky, and all this sand kept landing on my head, and it was really annoying. But um, all of this stripiness, oh, cool design, thank you very much, uh, that was natural. I just straightened it out a little bit. Uh, but I, I thought it was kind of cool that the quartz was going through the, um, <clears throat> the between the sandstone and the basalt in a you know, a striation like that. That's not the right word. You know what I mean. Um, so I eventually built these carpenters. This was the point of everything. The whole point of everything was these carpenters. These can now be crafted by the semi-automatic -auto crafting area that we just saw. So there's three of them now. They are slightly manual. You have to fill this up manually with super glue. You have to fill this one up manually with super glue. But this one you also have to fill up manually uh, with silicone. But there's a bucket of silicone on top. So you can do it if you need to. This will eventually get improved we can probably deal with fluids through the ae system i have a feeling this version of ae does not have proper fluid handling which is a shame because i thought that it would have and had it done so it would have um at least been on par with the refined storage which is what tristan was suggesting that we used in the first place but you know it's it's different we could probably implement both why don't we go to refined storage and do that as well um who cares so what happens here is there's a single pattern in each of these interfaces. This is why it's so expensive. You have to have one interface for each carpenter because the carpenter <clears throat> can only have the recipe that it is there for. The interface holds the pattern for it, which says, you know, one red alloy plate, two blah, 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 which is the number of things in here. So if you ask for a gold uh, a logic processor, it will put those things into that inventory, which is how auto crafting is supposed to work, right? It's supposed to be able to just put things into the inventory and bam, there you go, you get the thing out of it. This will take some time to build. Let's uh, give an example. So previously, last week, in order to build the logic processors, and therefore all of this, by the way, every single time I wanted one of those logic processors, I had to get the stuff out of the uh, system and go all the way over to the personal crafting area, put everything into the carpenters, wait, and then now it will do it for you. You still have to wait, but you don't have to go and do anything. Uh, back last week, I actually made it into a semi-automatic recipe, <clears throat> even though it could fit in a normal thing because it didn't need to. So if we look at logic processor here, you can craft them. So if you start next, uh, oh, anyway, you get the idea. <laughs> I'm not gonna go through all that just to show you a summary. That would go in there, you'd wait for it and it'd come out. And all the things that require it would therefore wait for it, which is nice because if you wanted to make one of these semi-automatic crafting recipes, which do include logic processors, um, I, I think the ME controller, for example, is very likely to require one. Uh, no, come on, this one. Um, 
you know, it was to craft three. So there's a lot of things missing to craft that. So we're still building up the things that it can do automatically and the things that you have to do manually. It's kind of annoying that some of it is water buckets and some of it is water cells, but anyway. Um, <clears throat> you can see that it's going to build three of those. Not until it has crafted all three of those will it put the things for the ME controller itself into the chest upstairs. <coughs> Excuse me. The chest itself is still in an annoying place. Apologies to Mike. Mike says, can we move it? Yes. Yes, we can. Um, <clears throat> this little uh, sort of pseudo network down here Remember this network here has no controller on it, it's just using two channels and it's getting power from the main network. We could probably shove this through the main network using P2P, which is kind of what P2P is for. It doesn't necessarily matter. Um, the reason I wanted to do that, actually it does matter. P2P would mean that that network remains isolated from the main network, which is the point. <clears throat> it only has the storage of this chest and the import bus in the first place, well the interface in the first place to put things into it. So anything that goes into this network is forced into that chest. If that merges with the main network it's got all that other storage and therefore you can't guarantee that things will go in the right place. This is also attached to things, the storage bus for the main network, but notice they're not actually connected together, they're just using the same chest. So we can't let those networks touch, we can't cross those streams, so P2P would allow us to send that isolated network through uh, this network and upstairs somewhere without touching them. The next thing they wanted to do, if you want to have a look at the episode I did, which is a for science episode, not a real episode, where I learned how um, export buses and the draw controllers work, I have now got a strategy for creating uh, plates. We want to create plates. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill these up with, uh, well I've got one of each type of plate in there already. I'm going to put a downgrade on them which will mean that each of these sections can only hold 64 items, i.e. one stack. Um, so for this one, which has got an iron plate and a tin plate, I'm going to put a second iron plate and tin plate. That will hold 128 of each. This will just be constantly making them, but it will be putting them into those drawers. Which means that when there is you know, nothing else, no room for anything, it will stop doing it. So this is going to be able to pull from the main network, craft a thing and push it out there. Have a look at, I think, previous episode as well, I explained how that would work. Um, this is going to have another mini network that doesn't connect to the main network to keep it isolated and then the main network can use this as storage for plates. So, that's going to be in the next episode, uh, in the next stream, which is tomorrow from my perspective. Uh, so you'll see how that works. I'm not going to put it together yet. Tristan had to move this up one level because apparently I had put it here. Well, I had put it here, but apparently here was not in range of all the drawers upstairs. I didn't know that because I hadn't actually used it yet. I just put it down to, to get it going um, and it wasn't going. So what are you doing? String and white wall. Okay, so let me show you what this is doing. Why are you, okay. When you have got a thousand string, emit when levels are below limit. So when you have not got a thousand string, turn this on. So this is creating string. You can see it's got 64 string in its inventory and 64 cotton. When you've got less than a thousand string, it pulls things out of here and this is just going to continue to craft it because this is a retriever which is retrieving string for some reason. I feel like that would loop. Oh, because it can also create wool. So there's another retriever here. So this is presumed, yeah, this is whitelisted white wool. We've got less than 500, right, let's, let's go over there um, to the car park, which we, we don't talk about the mishap last week on the car park, um, to see how that's working. Here we go. Land. Nice. Doesn't hurt. We talk about it. Okay, so here we've got the car park, which has got loads and loads of cotton farms in it. And on each one of these, last week, I put one of these down. This is a plant gatherer. This is not necessarily the best way of doing it, but this is the way that I did it. There is an alternative, which I may try out next week to see what happens. Uh, I'll probably do it on a test patch, though, and then move it over here if possible. A plant gatherer gathers plants. The range add-on is required so that it will actually gather the area that you can see. Um, if you don't have one, it will only gather the area in front of it, which is sometimes fine. So you don't necessarily have to worry about that. But most of the time you want to be gathering that stuff. Each one has a servo attached to it, which is going to pull out everything that goes into it. What goes into it? 
all the cotton and all of the seeds that come from that because this is actually breaking the plants even though you can pick them this breaks them but then what happens how do you deal with the fact that now there is a missing uh, cotton plant well let's have a look at the one above us the one above us has <laughs> where did it go it's right here uh, a plant sower. A plant sower exists below us, and there's one there as well. Remember, this is a car park. It's got several tiers. Um, this is full of cotton seeds because the cotton seeds that come from here are going to be put into the system. Now, this is going to try and make sure they go downwards. This uh, item duct here is a dense item duct, even though it just says item duct on it, which means that the system considers it to be much, much longer than the other direction. It will always try and put stuff in the closest inventory that it can. So this one would have been trying to put stuff in the one above it and therefore the one below it wouldn't get anything which was a problem so now it's making sure that everything goes downwards as one of these on each level so the one above again has an item duct here so that plant sower that we just looked at which is now underneath us is being fed with seeds from this plant gatherer which is for some reason not doing anything active on redstone signal so someone's turned them all off that seems fair um <clears throat> i was actually going to do something like this in the next episode so tomorrow when we do the stream come have a look at how i make use of that because that is uh, something that i was going to do anyway <clears throat> this is going to extract everything this is going to pick up cotton and seeds each one of those has a thing on it notice also that the reason the seeds go in here is there's a filter on the way in rather than trying to figure out what to do here pull everything out and only seeds are allowed to go in here so seeds are in there this has also got a range add-on um, which just makes sure that it covers the yeah, you get the idea. Each one of those is basically exactly the same. So for this bottom one, because the bottom one also has hookups. Look at this uh, innocuous junction where you can't see anything happening at all. What could this possibly be? Um, I didn't use an elevator because I can jump and other people can't. So <laughs> they get stuck down here and I don't. Down here we've got, there's the plant so that I mentioned. This is going to be fed from the bottom-most plant gatherer, that's there. Everything goes down here. I should have put the flux duct less in the way, but that's okay. Um, pretend that you can see this item duct. It goes above the flux duct. See how it goes down? There's your plant sower. So it does have on it a filter as usual. It's actually there, just because it's closest. And it's got a two three dense uh item ducts so that everything that can possibly go into this network i.e all seeds that can possibly go anywhere will def <coughs> definitely go into one of these things if they can before they try and go any further and where do they go into an interface we know how they work anything that lands in the interface gets absorbed into the system how does that work well I've actually got another P2P tunnel, which is the blue style. So see 8949 up there, just above you? Whoop, moved it. See 8949? That, ooh, I thought I broke it. <laughs> I thought I crashed Minecraft. That is the network that powers all the crafting terminals and things. It's the general purpose inventory network for the system. So let's try and uh, go and have a look at that, shall we? Zoom. We've seen this before. So all that thick stuff, all those... Uh... <laughs> this is Tristan's experiment, by the way, with P2P over P2P, which we call P3P. I have noticed that this is unlinked and missing a channel. I'm not sure why. It seemed to be working before he... Um... I don't know, logged off, restarted the server? I have no idea. Um, but you see how this is not actually outputting a channel. There's no channel there. It says 3 of 32, but it doesn't show 3 of 32, and this is not connected to anything. So I don't know what's going on there. Anyway, our actual P2P network is this one. So the blue one, 8949, is running along the trunk. Do you know what? I kind of want to just fix this while we're here. It's kind of bugging me that that's there. Let's put this here. There we go. Please, please go back together. Oh, we need... Well, that's interesting. Three outputs, which well, is working. So this 
It's using zero channels, but it's working. So don't ask me, because <laughs> I don't know. Let's go and have a look if I actually broke anything there. That's kind of weird. That shouldn't have, um, shouldn't have changed anything. That's working. So this, uh, this thing here has all that thick cable for some reason, but actually it's got a P2P output down there somewhere. I'm trying to show you. <laughs> it's very complicated. Here, look. So the blue one outputs on 8949, which uses a single channel. There you go, three of 32 channels. Um, we didn't necessarily need to use all that thick cable to just go up there, because there's only three things up there. But that's one of them. So there's one blue output, and that's just doing a bit of storage, the crafting terminal, stuff like that. We've got this massive trunk, which I believe I've shown you before. This can now carry four, uh, 32 endpoints for P2P. Currently it's carrying four, so we've not actually got that many, but we can spread it around the base. One of which is the one underneath the car park, one of which is the one at bees. And uh, tomorrow I'm hoping to maybe do a bit more with bees now that I've got AE2 attached to it. One of them will be at Lawrence's um, tower. I don't know where the fourth one is. Maybe that is it? No, because that's be using... Yeah, it's using five channels, that's using four. So there's, a, there's another one. Oh, it's in the personal crafting area because Lawrence went to the effort of actually putting an access port to all this inventory over there where we actually need the inventory to be accessed from. So that's nice. Uh, so those are the things that we've been, I've been working on particularly. Um, we have automated the carpenters and I have started thinking about how to have a constant supply of plates and uh, I, was doing, I was telling you about the cotton because the cotton uh, cotton turns into string and string turns into wool but having a an inventory an AE inventory full of cotton is useless so what we've got here Tristan's put together this thing where uh, as long as there's not enough string in the system all that cotton will be just turned into string and as long as there's enough wool then all that wool will, uh, string will be turned into wool so all that cotton will be used to its essentially its maximum potential before it gets stored just as cotton which means that there's more point in having all those things on and someone's gone around and turned them all off again which is a great idea because we don't need any more cotton in the system basically uh, no doubt the cotton was filling up one of these things because we don't really have filters on these so as, if, if too much stuff comes into the system like if this drawer overflows wherever the cotton drawer is and you put more cotton in it's just going to go into one of these whichever one you know can accept it so you're going to end up with a junk box full of actual junk instead of junk that we've been carrying around so that's a problem so we don't want to be doing that. Um, let me have a look at what other people have been doing, and I will be right back. So I've braved Lawrence's tower. I don't find myself in here very often, because he's done a lot of changes. And if you go and have a look at his previous video, I think he explains a lot of these. And if you go and have a look at his current video, which I will have linked at the end of this video, provided that we've lined up properly, he will explain everything else. Now, I think some of this might be part of the altar below. Let's have a look. Because this altar's getting a bit silly now. <laughs> yeah, look. So I remember that the, the glowstone has to be in that position, but it doesn't have to necessarily be attached. So you can put any block, including air, between that glowstone and I think this block here. This that's an elevator. Oh, it's this block here. So this corner where there's air, I think, has to have a glowstone above it at some point at that point but it doesn't have to have anything actually supporting it so we've got wood here and then glowstone on top of it and that's actually part of the altar down here which is a tier hmm. i think you have to uh be a blood wizard to do that <laughs> it's not going to tell me see how it doesn't tell me what it is in the top corner there lawrence knows what it is because he has a little machine that will tell him look at these blinking torches lag um so Lawrence has hooked up the machine, so we told you about that. Ah, look, two of 32 channels, one of 32 channels. So down here, we've got the AE system is accessible, but also whoop, up here, the AE system is accessible. Where did it go? Splash, ooh, bit of a starlight bath there. I don't what they mean by bathed in starlight. Maybe it's in this, on this level. Oh, here it is, yeah, it's on this level. So he's basically put one access port at the top and one at the bottom to access the AE system from where whatever he happens to be doing. Because this is light magic up here and that's dark magic down there and all that lightning is very, very uh, disconcerting and very, very frightening me. You'll notice that this is a blue and that's because you put a blue cable at the back of it. If you put a blue, uh, a coloured cable and then a terminal on the cable, the terminal gets the colour of the cable, which is really cool. 
Now, I should mention, in case people are confused, the colour of the cable is meaningless. All that does is prevent it from connecting to cables of a different colour. It will always connect to a cable of no colour. So, the fact that this is blue is meaningless to the system. It's meaningful to us because what we've said is that anything that is on the, um, the P2P network for crafting stuff should use the blue thing. Uh, can we get one more down? Yeah. So, ooh, that's cool. I didn't know this was here. Um, somewhere between there and there, one would expect, is the P2P output for the same number that we saw before in the car park. That's because that's the network that is basically servicing everybody with items. If you wanted to do something else, we would probably start thinking about having another colour. Um, but we can still shove 32 things down this. Um, I wonder if we can shove more. We should for science that. So we do have a little bit of an issue, actually, because we don't know at each point where P2P comes out how many channels we're allowed to use because at the end point of the P2P it's flat against the ME controller which may mean that you have no limit or it may mean that you have a limit of 32. It means you have a limit of 32 we should move everything back a little bit so that we can see um, between them how many cables are being used on that network because over here anything that comes out of the P2P um, device down there wherever it is. <laughs> I'm hoping there is one, otherwise Lawrence has very much done it wrong. But he, no, he must have done, because this has thingy, right? So there must be a P2P endpoint to serve the network that has items on it, not the network that has P2P on it. Um, so down there somewhere there's a P2P thingy to get data out, but Lawrence is using two things over here, I'm using one over there, the car park's using one over there's one here, there and everywhere, right? So if eventually we end up with 32 things attached to that P2P network, but disparately, we don't know for each one how much it's contributing to the load. And I don't know if the load has a maximum of 32 or if it's infinite, so we need to for science that and make sure that we don't do it wrong. Um, otherwise, I have no idea what Lawrence has done, because I cannot follow all of this <laughs> and do other stuff as well. Uh, I did notice that he mentioned on one of his videos that you've got this uh, input and output. Where's the desync in that chest? Uh, you can put things in here. Now, you can fix Tinker's tools in here. But there is a chance that they will get cursed. So maybe consider that. Uh, as uh, if, it's a, if it's made of expensive material, then maybe the curse is worth it. Worth it. Um, but... If it's not, I don't know if Lawrence has made the thing yet that can remove the curse again, <laughs> is what I'm saying. So let's take that out of there before we end up with a hammer that you know teleports us every time we use it. Right, uh, what else have we got? Did you know that with extra utilities you can have a cobblestone generator just by putting a transfer node on a piece of cobblestone that is being generated by vanilla mechanics? Look how this is going up, one at a time, very slowly. That's a transfer node from extra utilities to a pipe to get it going to there, and then all of this is just creating endless amounts of compacted cobblestone. Notice how there's only 56, but every time we get to enough, however many that is, a multiple of nine, um, we get one of those, and then whenever we get multiple of nine of those we can have one of those but whenever we get to a multiple of nine of those apparently it just fills up this so I'm not quite sure how that works because you can see we've got a multiple of nine of that so we've got one of those and then when we get nine of those we get one of those which eventually we'll get so we've actually got 15 four times compressed cobblestone so if you do the math that's like I guess that's nine to the power of four right one two three no, that's five times compressed. That's five times. That'll be six times. Yeah. Not compressed. One, two, three, four, five. What? Oh, that must be that. So 11 of those are fallen into there. So we've got two, three, four, four, five. Yeah, five, six, six, seven, eight. So it goes up to eight. <laughs> and all that's being done just from this one thing here. Brilliant. Uh, this was me trying to set up uh, water uh, it has been unhooked 
by a malicious party. Possibly myself, I don't remember. Um, <laughs> Pete has been doing... I was looking around for what Pete was doing because he was trying to compress his Inferium Essence automatically, I think, into the next layer, which is Superium and then Supremium, etc. I'm not sure what the tiers are exactly, but when you've got enough of it, you want to basically want to automatically compress it so that you've got the next layer up, so that you've got room in your inventory for the you know layer below. Otherwise, there's no point in growing Inferium stuff and then just sort of forgetting about it when it costs. It's another nine to the power of X thing for each layer, right? So when you're trying to grow something like Supremium, which is nine inferior or eight, whatever. The point is, it's a lot. So you want to be doing it automatically so that when you're not there and it's running, it keeps making stuff. Mike was messing around with these. I'm not quite sure what his goal is here. I think he's just trying to have a, an index, sort of a, a catalog at this point of all the different fluids that we can have. And then uh, we want to, at some point, create a room where all of our liquids are in tanks so you can go along and get stuff, but also so that we can use them i hope in ae2 for crafting stuff and if we can't there's alternatives you know we can still hook pipes up to them hook the pipes up to machines you know turn the pipes on when we need the thing and put a bucket in a um a, a fluid transposer or something so there's ways of doing it it's just not ideal so nothing really seems to be going on here ah apart from all this stuff <laughs> don't know why this is all in here probably quests being made um Otherwise, I nothing more to say. Oh, let's have to have a look at Pete's yacht. We haven't. Oh, the other thing. There isn't nothing to say. Look at this. Lawrence and Tristan found a self-healing zombie, and have named it of WTF Imba. By naming it, it will not despawn, and because it's regenerating, it is constantly being injured by the. <clears throat> it's being injured by the spikes under there. This is generating blood for Lawrence's blood system. By magic. Well, okay. Yeah, no, I think it really is, because there's a pipe there. <laughs> I don't know how that works. Watch Lawrence's video to find out. Pete made a yacht a while ago. Uh, I kind of feel like he must have copy-pasted this, because ain't nobody got time for that. Please, Elytra. There we go. It is at least docked right now, which is nice, so that we don't have to worry too much about uh, going to chase it. It's a Duke Nukem door! Is that allowed? A curtain? This is amazing. Look at that. Let me through. So, oh, you can nick all this stuff. Brilliant. A concrete yacht. Pete, uh, <laughs> very ambitious. A bit of an uh, uh, explorer of Pete's yacht. He's got a bed. The bed's got small stories full of food and bone meal. Got a shower, maybe? It's got showers in it. Got a bookshelf. This is luxury accommodation right here. Oh dear. Uh, is that supposed to be in the... I'll let you off. Look at this place. Is this a swimming pool? Maybe. It's got doors in it. <laughs> Did you know? You know? Your swimming pool's got doors in it. I like all these different types of doors. Plates on the table. Square meals for a yacht. What are you doing? <laughs> uh, usual crap on TV. <laughs> Hashtag every Netflix show ever. Am I right? This is bare room. This yacht's not finished. No wonder it's not under sale. What is this? Escape hatch? Strange window things? Where's the lifeboats? Uh, there better be lifeboats on this thing, by the way. Because uh, I can't sign up on this. It looks like there's more work to do. This, this uh, yacht is under construction. The actual posh parts have not been built yet. Yeah, look at all this space. Plenty of room for the captain's cabin and stuff like that. No lifeboats, but that's okay. It's not going to This is very low mast. Hopefully you don't actually need to see where you're going. This is cool. Oh, let me up. <laughs> Ow. Oh, it's built on water. Hey, it's built on dirt. As all good things should be. Don't tell Pete that I've learned his dirty secret. Dirty secret. Oh, pun intended. Wow, look at this. It's, it's a hover yacht. 
It actually works on a cushion of air. No wonder it's so efficient. It's dead good, that. It should have one of them things like in the... You know, like in James Bond or whatever, where they've got... Um... Ooh, like in Subnautica. Where you can climb up through the bottom of the ship and there's, because of the air pressure, the water doesn't encroach on the rest of the base. Let me out. So you can have a little submarine dropping off type uh, bay. Or a, a bomb dropping bay, depth charges and stuff. Fancy a balustrade with Newell. Those aren't words. Newell. That's a person. It's brilliant. It's got a lot of words to it, I guess, because, well, there's lots of decks with plenty of room for them for cool stuff to be on. And of course, this is, <laughs> just stops. Okay, cool. Ah, uh, Pete's not got all the time in the world. I'm not, I'm not criticising. I'm just saying maybe when we come back, there'll be like a pool table or something. That'd be amazing. All righty. Uh, I guess I've got nothing else to report then. But it's been a long video anyway, so thanks for watching. Come by tomorrow or whenever I release this, maybe today. You're used to me saying that by now. And we will have a look at... What is this mess? Oh, it's a ranged nanobot beacon. We really need to work on more power, I think. But okay. Um, come back tomorrow when we will try and maybe automate this thingy so that we can make empowered things. It, it will take time, but we can probably automate that as well if we wanted to. Um, the automation of empowering these things, we can probably do that. Currently it's automated by having hoppers full of the stuff that you need to make it. <laughs> it's the stuff. Um, and we'll look at automating those plates. The automation of that empowerer, by the way, is necessary for plates because many of the things that we're trying to make automatically, the most tedious parts, are made of uh, plates of Restonia and stuff like that. Um, so we want to do that. We want to so look at the plates. We're going to look at this thing. I'm going to smack myself in the face because I'm being too vigorous in my counting. Um, we're going to have a look at the cotton farm so that we can switch it on when we need it. Uh, various other upgrades so come by then it's check out my discord which is probably in the description below and then you can find out when i'm actually playing and where um check out lawrence's video which is probably showing up around about now and i will see you next time thanks for watching bye